Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah, coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give all praise to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who was wisdom, who was the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai, prayer to the Most High, blesses this lesson this evening. Gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand the events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. As we're coming into these last days, it is very important to understand where prophecy is supposed to unfold. Many um, people, many people have been led to believe that prophecy was going to be fulfilled over in the three parts. And as you look here, you know, that is what we've been taught. That everything started here in uh, Europe, Asia, and Africa, and that uh, the culmination of the uh, end times was going to happen here as well. But now as you start to look at how things are supposed to unfold, you're starting to realize that many of the events that were supposed to happen in prophecy are not happening over there in the three parts. I'm sitting here listening to a lot of the news and they're talking to a lot of the citizens here in America. And it's just funny because they're constantly trying to make it seem as if others are being are having to pay for their actions. But when you talk about people here in America having to pay for the sins of their fathers, they just act like that's just something that's never going to happen. I was watching a YouTuber and he was talking about the floods and um, China. And he was trying to say things like, well, maybe that's why, because, you know, because they unleashed this plague that, you know, God is now punishing them. They're really people here in the, in the Americas are really quick to try to pass judgment on others. But then when someone talks about them having to pay, it's the last thing that they, um, you know, think that is ever going to happen to them. Just like this big, huge um, biker rally up in South Dakota where it doesn't seem like it's a good idea and they were actually, um, you know, in the middle of a pandemic and they were actually um, interviewing some of the bikers and they're like, we don't believe in that. We don't believe that's true. You know, I said, we don't believe that those things are really happening. It's political. And it's, it's, it's just getting to be kind of crazy because it seems like that's the, all of these events are all just culminating into, you know, them having that second lockdown and want them wanting to have that second lockdown. So just allowing them to just do what they do. Letting these citizens just do what they do. They ne they never believe that um, they have to pay for anything. They never they they don't actually ever think that we have to we're ever going to get recompensed here, you know, for the things that have happened to us, and that they're never going to have to pay. But see, when you read the scriptures, that's exactly what it talks about. You know, let's see where this does this where does this um, prophecy fit? Does it fit the three parts, or does it fit here in the Americas? When you go to Genesis 15 and 13, and it says, "And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs." Well, we did not have possession of this land. Ultimately, this land is going to be given back to us before a time. We were a stranger in this land. We didn't realize that this land was ours. That's not really happening over in the three parts. That was happened. That's something that happened right here. Okay. Lands that is not theirs and shall serve them. Okay, let's read that part again. And uh, he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them. And they shall afflict them 400 years. When did um, Abram's seed go through an affliction for 400 years in the three parts? Now, only place they can kind of try to run to is the Egyptian captivity. But we've already shown how before 1780, you know, the 17, late 1700s, there was no mention of Egypt in the three parts. There is nothing to prove that Joseph was actually in Egypt. Over there, so if Joseph wasn't there, then his his uh, you know brothers and sisters weren't there. 
then it could not have gone through for 400 years of captivity. We know they were there for 430 years and they sojourned for quite a bit of time, but the people, the, our people were not, you know, in captivity for 400 years there. So now you have to go, if, if that's not the case, you know, if you can't prove it over there, but you do know about 1619 around then to 2019, 400 years over here. Therefore, that means that then this prophecy is being fulfilled over here. So now when you start to talk, you read that again, okay? And shall serve them, okay? And they shall afflict them 400 years. There's no proof of that happening in the three parts. Even though the Gentiles have gone out of their way to try to make it seem as if, you know, prophecy is being fulfilled in these areas, and it's not. So now what does it say? And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance so the most high has to judge the nation that had us in captivity for 400 years if you can't find that over in the three parts then that means then the lands over here are going to have to serve that you know that punishment and it's just amazing when you sit here and listen to these people how they just feel that you know everything is fake this plague is fake everything all the numbers are fake um you know the fact that they are being told to stay home or whatever else that is fake because their prophecy, you know, there's nothing in prophecy for them that they ever have to pay for anything over here. We have to pay for everything that happens over there. See, you know, Ish was, you know, supposed to go through their Holocaust. And we were giving them millions and millions of dollars. Okay, a day. I thought it was around 10 million and just got um, increased. And in now that we're paying 19 million dollars a day even though we're going through covid here our many people uh, can't pay their bills many people uh you know can't put a roof over their head congress cannot agree to do anything for the people but they can agree to give 19 million dollars a day to ish right now does that see everything has everybody has to pay because supposedly prophecy was everything is over there, but the people here suffer. The people here who actually have all the resources suffer. Does that make absolutely any sense? None. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. These people say that they believe in the Bible. They say they believe in what the Bible says. Well, the Bible says that the real Israelites, the real, you know, children okay of abram his posterity was going to go through 400 years of affliction can you show me any time where the israelites went through 400 years of affliction over there in the three parts because I mean, if a group went into affliction that long it should be easily documented you should easily be able to find 400 years of the most high chosen people going through some kind of slavery that's because you know, I mean, that's a huge, you know, that's a huge ordeal and it's a very long time. But if you can't prove that it happened over there, then that's not what the Most High is talking about as far as the punishment is concerned. When you really look at it, the only place that that fits is over here in the Americas. So now, you know, people can believe it's the elites. You know, I keep hearing all these videos talking about the elites are doing this and the elites are doing that. And that just shows the lack of understanding of these people. The elites did not give, you know, the elites didn't have the authority to come over here. The Most High gave the elites that, that opportunity to come over here because we messed up. It wasn't that they came up with it on their own and they're just so smart and they made up all these plans. It's, it's like, uh, if you're, you know, when I was younger and I didn't have anybody to play with, I would sometimes play games like, say you're going to play chess, but you don't have two people. So you play chess on your own and you control both sides. So you make one move on one side then you get up and go on the other side and make another move over there. That's what this is. That's what's going on right now. The most high is controlling the chess board. He plays both sides of the game. And he's making them make moves. He's making the other side make moves. But when people don't understand that, they don't understand that the most high is in charge of both sides of the chess board. And he's opening up understanding. These prophecies that have been written in the Bible, I said, even though that man has tried to force it to make it seem like it happened over here 
in the three parts, but it's being fulfilled right now. Every time they make a move, the most high, you know, checks them. Like all of a sudden, you're starting to hear about all these uh, things going on in the schools and how they wanted to open up the schools. See, these people want to have all their fun. You know, be damned if they're going to have to actually be inconvenienced all summer. They want to go out and party all summer, have a great time. They don't give a damn about what's going to happen in the future. But then when it's time for schools to open, they don't care if things are going out of control. They want them open anyways. That's how these people are. Because, damn it, they don't want to take care of their own kids. They want them in school so, you know, mom can go back to the gym. She can be the trophy wife and have, you know, I said, because this is this is their heaven. So they can go hang out with the girls while their kids are in school. I said, because that's because that's what they're used to doing. So they've had their fun in the summer. And now they want to, you know, continue with their fun in the fall and the winter. But all of a sudden, the last two weeks of July, there was stories coming out about more kids actually testing positive. Because they were been saying, oh, kids don't get it. Kids don't get it. Well, we'll see what happens. I said, the most high is the one who's in control of everything. So every time you guys say something, something happens to counteract what you're saying. And that's what's going on right now. So you guys, you're going to see many things that they believe aren't, are not going to end up uh, coming to fruition. They, you know, it's, it's funny because they want to keep on, they, they want to say, yes, America is being judged. But they want to make up their excuses as to why. Oh, it's because of abortion. Oh, it's because we've taken um, God out of the schools. Oh, we took prayer out of, out, of, out of schools. You know, that's why things have gotten so bad. Because they want, to, they want to make up their own, you know, reasons as to why America has come under punishment. They'll never admit the fact that if you go to the scriptures, and it talks about the 400 years, that that's why they're being destroyed. Because the 400 years is up. The Most High is claiming his people once again. The Most High has turned his face back to his people. So now, you know, when they, when they try to break down prophecy, it always goes back to Ish and the so-called Middle East. Well, first and foremost, proof that Ish was in, you know, in captivity for 400 years, you know, lately. Not, not, not trying to go back to Egypt and try to go that route because, you know, you can't prove that Ish was here. You can't go to just, you can't just say, oh, my proof is that Charlton Heston played the Ten Commandments. Say, look, all of them were white. No, it doesn't work that way. Archaeological evidence does not support that. And you guys already know that. But you can easily find 400, you can find 500 plus years from 1492 till, till now that we've been under the uh, thumb of the Gentiles. And at that time has now come to an end. And you can actually also look at, you know, even on your own money. You put 2020 and you flip it upside down and you start seeing the mass. You know, and I'm sitting there just listening. Everyone's all like, well, that's just, you know, they're just, it's a trial run. Now they're going to lock down everything, you know, permanently. Well, that's the most high. It's not, it's not them. They're, they're, I heard a, one of the other YouTubers talking about how they wanted to reduce population by 90%. That's not the elite's idea. That's the most high. Read that. You read that in, in Second Esdras, how this world was made for many. And the world to come is made for few. That's not that's not something that the elites came up with. That's something that the Most High has already deemed, okay, and and, and already declared that that's what's going to happen. So it's not, you know, the elites. That's the Most High. But yeah, so so now that they keep on trying to push that whole thing with prophecy over there, like oh, there was an explosion in Beirut, you know, and then I said, yeah, and. What is that? How, how does that deal with biblical prophecy? They've been shooting at each other for years now, and nothing's gone off yet. But it's going to. I said, remember uh, World War Three. That's on. Yeah, that's definitely on the on the, um, on the horizon. But remember World War One, World War Two. Where were those fought? Over there. So it would make more sense that World War Three is going to be fought where? Over there. I said I would love to see where the 400 years prophecy uh, happened. Over there, and the and the uh, and the three parts, because at the end of that, you know, 400 years, the Most High already said that the nation that had us in captivity was going to have to pay. So if we weren't over there for 400 years, then those people aren't paying for what happened to the, you know, at, the, at right there at that time. The people who had us in captivity for 400 years, those are the ones that are going to have to pay. So Genesis 15:14, again, and also that nation whom they shall serve, will I judge. 
and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. So we're going to come out. The Most High Shows people are going to come out with great substance. The people that made us serve them are going to be judged. They don't get to pick how they're going to be judged or why they're being judged. They're not admitting the truth. They're not telling you that, you know, they said, that, oh, black lives matter. So we're just going to take this knee. Now we're all good. That's what that's what they thought they were going to have to pay. But that's not what the Most High says. So like I said, it's, it's all coming around. It's all making more sense. And they don't get to choose, you know, oh, abortion. Oh, it's because, you know, uh, we lost our way. Oh, we were a godly nation before, you know, but now, you know, we, we lost our way. And now we're going to try to pray for our, we're going to come back to you like Chronicles, you know, Second Chronicles 7.14 says, you know, if we're going to try to, you know, get our land back. We're going to try to, you know, most of all, he's going to heal our nation. No, no, he's not. He's going to give the nation and his lands back to his chosen people. So like I said, prove the 400 years over there in the three parts. Prove the most highest chosen people, anybody. Show anybody being, uh, you know, put in, actually put in slavery for 400 years. Did that happen with the Arabs? Yeah, the Arabs had our people in slavery too. And like I said, they're, hey, everyone that's had our people in slavery is all going to have to pay. We already know that. But don't skimp out and act like the people over here in the Americas get to choose, you know, how they're going to pay with taking a knee and then not acknowledge who the most highest chosen people are. And not acknowledge, they've been acknowledging the 400 years. If you actually listen to them, they've been acknowledging, yeah, we've had you guys enslaved for 400 years. That right there is showing you that Genesis 15 and 13 was happening over here. They've already been admitting that. The next thing they got to admit is that they're going to have to pay and that the judgment is going to be falling on them. So as much as they want to, you know, act like things, you know, are all fake, nothing's real, and that they're in control, the Most High is in control of absolutely everything. All praise is the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who was wisdom, who was Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.